So double triggering is uh, encountered uh, a lot in patients on mechanical ventilation. And it is very important that the intensivist is able to recognize this patient ventilator is synchrony. And in order to understand double triggering, you need to understand the relationship between the inspiratory time on the ventilator and the patient's inspiratory efforts. In this breath that is volume controlled breath with a fixed flow and fixed tidal volume. After delivering tidal volume, you can see the inspiratory time on the ventilator ends at this point here. And this period here where the flow is zero and the volume is constant, it is the plateau phase of the inspiratory uh, time. If you know, if you take a look on the inspiratory efforts of the patient, you can see his inspiratory effort continued beyond this inspiratory time on the ventilator. This continued inspiratory efforts will cause the airway pressure to go down and it may reach the triggering threshold that will trigger a new inspiratory cycle. So you can see here another breath is started and the same tidal volume with the same flow is given to the patient resulted in two stacked tidal volume over the first breath and higher pressure as a result of the larger tidal volume in the lung. Notice that there is no expiration in between the two breaths. Now this example illustrates, illustrates this phenomena in more details. Instead of the volume over time curve, we have esophageal pressure tracing here. And you can see that this is a volume controlled mode of ventilation. The first one is a volume controlled breath that is triggered by the patient, so it's assisted breath. The second breath is assisted breath triggered by the patient. You can see the negative deflection in the esophageal pressure here. With a decrease of the esophageal pressure, the trachea pressure is decreased and the first breath is triggered. Now the inspiratory time for the first breath is finished. However, the patient continued to contract his inspiratory muscles. In fact, you can see that the esophageal pressure here is lower. This negative pressure caused the airway, airway pressure to decrease below the triggering threshold. And that triggered another breath with the same tidal volume as the previous one. So here the ventilator was triggered with the same inspiratory effort of this breath. It is given also with higher pressure due to the high volume that was in the lung as a result of the stacked press. Now because of the large tidal volume, in order to prevent hyperinflation, the body has a reflex called herring brewer reflex, which will inactivate any further inspiratory efforts. So the inspiratory drive will be inhibited, allowing for prolonged expiration to exhale the tidal volume that was inhaled in these two uh, stacked press. This is another example to show a little bit of difference in terms of the uh, volume over time. So you can see the first breath here is also started by the patient indicated by the scooping here and the continued efforts of the patient caused the airway pressure to drop below the trigger threshold. And this triggered another breath and the, the second tidal volume was added to the first tidal volume. However, what you see here is that the first tidal volume ends here and the second tidal volume was not added on top of this. Instead, the volume over time curve 
return to zero before the next breath. This is similar to what happens with the air leak. So the machine recalibrated the volume. The volume is still in the lung, but because the next breath started, the machine will recalibrate the volume back to zero before the next breath is given. So this volume is actually added to this volume, but it is not shown on this tracing. And you can see that there is no expiratory flow here. So this is inspiratory flow, and this is another inspiratory flow that is added to this one. You can also notice that there is also a large increase in the peak airway pressure that is caused by the stacked breath. At the same time, look at the high peak expiratory flow and the prolonged expiration as we mentioned in the previous example. Now, in contrast to volume controlled breath, in pressure controlled breath, it is slightly different. So again, the inspiratory time on the machine is shorter than the patient's expiratory, uh, inspiratory efforts. So there is a prolongation of the patient inspiratory effort beyond the limit of the inspiratory time on the machine. So once the first breath, which is pressure controlled breath, you can see the square waveform of the pressure. And as soon as the inspiratory, <coughs> inspiratory time is finished, the pressure starts to go to zero. However, the patient is still in inspiration and he's contracting his inspiratory muscles and he co uh, that causes a decrease in the airway pressure to reach the threshold for triggering again, and this will trigger another breath. The second breath will be given with the same pressure as the first breath, because this is pressure control mode of ventilation. However, it will result, uh, it, will, it will lead to lower tidal volume because there is already volume into the lung. So the volume that is stacked to the first volume is not equivalent to the same volume. It is lower. And you can see that the flow also is lower here. So I hope this makes it clear in your mind what we mean by double triggering and how we identify them on uh, pressure uh, versus volume control mode of ventilation. If you have any question or comments, please add this to the comment sections of this video. Thank you.